Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth playthrough. We are on now episode 3. Alright, um, yeah. Uh, uh, we're almost two hours into the game already. Uh, I'm going to try to make these 30 minute videos like I did my Final Fantasy XVI uh, playthrough simply because I feel like most of the time, 30 minutes is about what most people make videos these days. So we're going to set a timer like I used to in those. Well, still, I, I'm not finished with those, mind you, but still, you know, you get the idea, guys. So a 30-minute timer starting now. All right, we're going to go ahead and play this game and get on with it. Starting uh, where we left off in the last video. Why are we walking? wasting our time. I really don't get why we're sneaking to the degree that we are. Yes, a boss. Yes, a boss. Materials into more practical items. A Republic antique, but it still works. You'll get more use out of it than me. Why are you doing this? Could have just turned us in. History with Shinra. Who knows? Maybe this will turn out to be the worst decision I've ever made. So before I change my mind, you better get going. Interesting. Transmuting items. From the item transmuter screen in the main menu, you can convert raw materials into practical items such as consumables, equipment, accessories, and more. 
to expand your transmutation options, collect commuter chips found throughout the world, or improve your craftsmanship. Notice it says or. So we got potion. Uh, yeah, I go ahead and do the tutorial. Let's see. You can now transmit items and armor using the materials from Broden. Try creating a potion. Sure. First, open the item transmitter menu. Of course, the currently transmitted items are listed here. Increasing your craftsmanship and acquiring transmitter chips will expand the range of items you can create. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I just got through eating. These are the materials and necessary amounts for the selected item. Here you can see the requirements for transmuting a potion. Three planets, blessing, and ten sage, yeah. Which is exactly, of course, what he gave me. <sighs> transmuting an item for the first time grants XP, which increases your craftsmanship. Be sure to create new items whenever you get the chance. Okay, but only the first? That's kind of dumb. Okay. Through transmutation, you can keep your supplies topped up without needing to buy items from vendors. Materials can be found out in the field or in chests and gained through combat. There are awesome items that can only be obtained via transmutation. Finish. All right. Cool. Down and out. Yo. Air raid shelter, huh? Outside scene. Kind of. What? Uh. Well, that was the last one. At least till things calm down. <laughs> Barrett. <laughs> Got that? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. Oh Lord, have mercy! That looks funny. What's over here? Nothing. Damn. See, this is the thing I don't like. See how see how slow he walks, and you can, and I'm. Don't know if you can hear that, but I'm pressing the sprint button, and I can't sprint. I don't like that. I wish they'd do away with that. If I'm backtracking, I'm wanting to backtrack for a reason. Where to now? Where there's a draft. This way. Looks like a job for me. Or the man who holds the BFS. The big freaking sword. Because, you know, to hold said BFS, he's got to be strong as fuck, too. Lord have mercy. Man, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little bit of deja vu here. <laughs> From remake. Oh, we got a hold. Also something they didn't remake. This is just a little bit different. Grasslands. Just look at it all. It's so green. A living, breathing planet. Even after everything we've done to it, it's still going strong. It may look that way, but in reality, it's barely hanging on. I guess I still have a lot to learn. What do you want to know? Hmm. For starters, how do we cross these planes? Come on now, that's easy. The same way you get anywhere. Pick a direction and start walking. Left, go left, go left, right. I guess 
we won't be coming back anytime soon. Guess not. Let's go. And there it was. The first step on our new journey. Are you coming? Yeah. Of course we are. Right? Choosing your party, just your battle party from the combat setting screen in the main menu. You can create up to three preset parties to swap between. While exploring the world, open the commands menu and press L1 or R1 to switch parties. All right. Setting a destination. Press the touchpad to open the map and get your bearings. While story markers and discovery markers will be automatically added to the map, you can place your own pin by pressing R3. For now, head to the farm Broden spoke of, as marked by the pin-looking thing. Co-conspirator, huh? Transmutation materials. The materials required to transmute items can be obtained while out exploring the world, procured from combat, or purchased at chocobo tax shops. If you're ever in need of a specific material, take note of its symbol, as it may point you in the right direction. It means obtained out in the world, dropped by enemies, are hard to come by. Furthermore, pressing the map, I mean, excuse me, pressing the touchpad in the item transmitter menu will reveal more information on required materials, including the regions in which they can be found. That's good to know. In other words, there's going to be a lot of uh, Dalton running around like a nutcase. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of that. Where's this go? Mm -hmm. Things. Oh, door's locked. Well, poo. I go this way. Well, that is definitely a no-go. But if I recall correctly... Hmm. Interesting. Oh, well. What about over here? Okay, that's a good sign. Doesn't actually wait. This doesn't actually lead anywhere, though. Well. And again, part of exploring, people, part of exploring. Alright. I didn't think they'd let me jump down from that far. Oh, yep, there we go. Ooh, a person. And by person, I mean bad guy. And by safe, you mean the enemies got bopped. Alright. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ, this terrain is kind of nuts, to be honest with you. Correction, this terrain is not kind of nuts. It is nuts. I'm surprised I just let me jump down from there.
ash location. Uh, you may find useful supplies hidden among abandoned facilities and settlements. Open all the chests in a location to mark it on your map as complete. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. This is neat. What did you just do, child? You just scared the dog shit out of me. <laughs> Interesting. Sure, more of huh? We can't go that way at all. Noted. We're not going that way yet. There it is. Okay, cool. So these boxes don't count. They're specifically talking about um, the other kind of box. That's good to know. I do like this terrain action thing, though. That's really cool. Actually. To just spam the button to fall out spells. Oh, wait, there's stuff over here. This is a thing. Where does this lead? I think that's a pretty logical question. Hey, another another cache location. Ooh, nice. Emerald. that. Grassy viaduct, huh? And this is how we get down. Oh, yep. <laughs> there we go. Oh god, this game is gorgeous. Yes, it is. Always need more stuff. Yep. Over here. I'm glad that the little pit things pop up really, yep, pretty far away. Nope. Oh. Got some monsters. Let's go bop them. Level up. So we've actually started out in this game at actually level 15. Ooh, we got a rare material over here. What is this? 
<clears throat> Lee Lithium? Is that what that's called? I believe so. I could be crazy, though. Thorin's Card Shop. Oh, really? No. Before we go inside, hold your horses. I see dingoes over here. Oh, ginger. Alright, let's see what's inside here. Door is locked, so we're not going in there yet. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Hopefully at some point that would be nice. Oh. I think we're getting up that way. We probably have to go back across this. Yep, we can go up right there. Right here. All you gotta do is point your, uh... Your left stick in the correct direction. <clears throat> Alright. This is a cash location, by any chance. Mm, doesn't look like it. There are some general boxes though. Ooh, hey. Everyone lets Phoenix down, man. Interesting. Let's see, they do manifest quite easy. Ooh, there's things over here. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm a loot goblin. Don't have to tell me that. I am a straight loot goblin. There's no other way of saying it. Ooh, boxes. Well, let's try. Hi, Moomoos. How are you doing? <gasps> Let's head over this way. Heard you be heading my way. You're safe here, but not for long. By the sound of it, Shinra's leaving no stone unturned. Might want to hole up at the old dock out by the swamp. I'd wager Shinra's forgotten it's even there. This is the folios thing. Okay, cool. What does this even mean? What do we got? Synergy ability over Fang. Interesting. Wild charge. Hmm. What is this base one? Nothing. This counter spin potency. And this uh, fire magic attack without expending MP. It's a strength and fire material spell. It's interesting. So you can only have up to 10x S uh, at a time. Interesting. So in other words, you need to spend it as, as much as possible. For a ranged attack with your partner, activated in sequence to trigger a three-hit combo. Can use while airborne. Interesting.
Divine Punishment. Teeth and makes use of Aeris Magic to deal damage across a wide area. That sounds amazing. Ask your partner to defend you while you move about the field. Unleash a wind magic attack without expending MP. Increases synergy skill and synergy ability damage by 5%. Barrett and Red hone their focus. Temporary 3 charge ATB 8. Okay. Team up with your partner and take a strong defensive stance. I like this idea. Charge damage by 5%. Unleash a lightning man. That's been XP. Onto it, leap into the air and deliver a spinning attack. Temporary unlimited MP. That sounds busted as hell. Actually, come think of it. What is your magic thingy? It's wind. Wind and ice are the first two. Interesting. Buying sell items. Vending machines offer a variety of useful items that will aid you on your venture, such as potions and plumes of Phoenix Down. They also sometimes offer limited quantities of certain items at special prices. Save some gill by stocking up on these resources while they are on sale. Alright, alright. So, Cushion allows you to use Broken Dome Rest Shop. Yep. What else? This is another thing. The Hunter's Bangle. Bangle made. Hmm. I have one point out they do not sell some important shit. I'm not going to sell anything right this minute. It's way too early in this game to be doing that. It, oh, wow. The amount of blocks are way the fuck over here. Crazy. Oh, and it actually puts... Okay, okay. It, I mean, to be fair, I did say it does this, but still. What is this? I'm saying all over his farm. Okay. Cool. Neat. Super neat. What can I say? I like to straight up the beaten path a lot. A lot. Oh, some monsters. We won't hold back. Unblockable attacks. When an enemy is about to use an attack that cannot be guarded against, the symbol will appear. Take evasive action when that mark displays next on the front screen. Lovely. Synergy skills. Pressing one of the four okay. action buttons while guarding will execute a synergy skill. Each of these skills function differently and may require you to hold down the corresponding button or tap into quick succession. Pressing the... Um, the touchpad while guarding will provide information on these skills. These commands do not consume ATB, but rather help fill party members' ATB gauges. Furthermore, performing synergy skills for the first time with Cloud will improve his relationship with his teammates. Being bound. 
Feminines will occasionally bind your party members with unblockable attacks. If your character is bound and unable to act, quickly switch to a different character with up and down on the D-pad or left and right on the D-pad. Fighting is red 13. Oh. Red 13 can definitely take down enemies with his razor sharp claws and face. Press square to swipe at foes or hold it down to unleash a whirling slash. Successfully guarding against attacks fills the vengeance gauge, which can be consumed with triangle to enter vengeance mode, <coughs> increasing Red 13's attack power and dodge speed. Vengeance mode can be activated at any time, but it will last longer according to how full the gauge is. Okay. Leave it to me. Stagger bonus. Enemies that have been staggered are left defenseless and take more damage. Striking stagger foes with triangle unique abilities will quickly fill your ATB gauge, allowing you to unleash devastating skills to finish off your opponent. Invoking summons. Interesting. When in the throes of battle, the entity slumbering within an equipped summoning material may begin to stir, prompting the summon gauge to appear. When this gauge has completely filled, you can call upon this deform entity for assistance. You're mine. Oh, I'm not the anyway. <clears throat> Alright, well. I do believe our 30 minute timer was up in the middle of battle. So we're gonna go ahead and stop here for this video. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, hit subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay informed with my stuff. Uh, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.